Hey guys! So today we are going to be doing yet another speed paint, this time of the characters Inuyasha and Kagome from the anime Inuyasha, or Kagome if you're more used to the English dub. So normally in my speed paint videos, I pretty much all the way through, I'll talk a little bit about the subject and then in detail I'll describe you know, my process for completing the drawing. But as you'll see very soon, unfortunately, I lost a lot of the footage for this drawing. So I'm taking this opportunity, one, to first of all, slow things down. Usually my speed paints are very, very fast, but hopefully this way, you all will be able to see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. And two, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different rather than just my process. So as of now, I only have a couple of videos of completed drawings up on my channel, but I've noticed that recently I've completely changed the way that I complete my drawings compared to when I first started. So my first medium that I ever used was actually colored pencils. I started out with regular old Crayola colored pencils, and then I upgraded to Prismacolor, and then what I think is an upgrade. I finally upgraded to polychromos and that those are the color pencils that I use now. And that's kind of what I did when I first got serious about learning to draw was I would just sketch out the drawing, ink it maybe, probably, and then just color the whole thing in with colored pencils. Which of course, there's nothing wrong with that at all, but that's what I did. And then later on, I discovered markers from seeing artists on YouTube, and that was my second medium. So uh, I think I was 15 years old when I got my first set of Copic markers. I got the Copic Chow markers, and I still use those in my videos now. But again, when I did my drawings, I would just sketch them out, ink them, and then finally color them in completely with Copic markers. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I've noticed that most artists generally stick to one main medium that they use per drawing. I rarely ever see mixed media drawings. I mean, I'm not particularly looking for them, maybe it's just because the artists that I tend to follow don't do that, but I don't know, I just don't see that a lot. And so recently, I've noticed that when I go to complete my drawings, I'm using more than one different medium. In fact, I use most of my different art supplies in each drawing that I do. So that generally for me includes my markers, my colored pencils, and some type of paint, whether it be acrylic, gouache, watercolor, whatever. So yeah, I use a lot of different mediums together and just try to see what I can do and how I can make them look good together. So one reason that I do this is because, I'm not gonna lie, I think for the, sh I think, short amount of time that I've been drawing, I probably have more art supplies than I should. And at least putting them all together doesn't make me feel so bad, like I'm able to use all of them. And the other reason is because, honestly, I can get bored very easily doing the same thing or things the same way over and over. And as you can see, it is not difficult for me to entertain myself by doing art. So for me at least, the end result of whatever I am drawing is almost never that important. Um, it's kind of cheesy, but honestly it's true, at least for me, the process is the main thing I look forward to. I mean, if the only thing that you're concerned about is the end result, I guess that's okay, but like... The process is what takes the longest, and like that's what doing art is. It's 
that's what creating is. I mean, do you have more fun creating the piece that you drew or looking at it afterwards? I, I rarely look at the things I draw afterwards, especially for me as a person who is not a professional artist by any means. This is not my job. I'm a full-time student that just does art, you know, as a hobby on the side, even though it does take up a good amount of my time. Again, it is not my job. So the end result is not what concerns me. It's just whether or not I had fun making the piece. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I do. So that's what I like to do. And that's why, you know, I have no problem experimenting with different supplies and, you know, putting them together, whether or not they'll look good or not. So like for example, for this drawing, in the foreground it's just the characters and I colored them in with just some basic marker blending. I go in with some colored pencils later, that's fine. Then the background is completely different. In the background I used acrylic paints and I did more of an impressionistic style. So whereas with the foreground, you know, I focused on the line art and stuff like that with the background almost no planning, there was none of that. I just really wanted to paint. Um, I knew from the beginning where I wanted them to be. And, you know, this wasn't really completely planned out. Of course, I had the idea, but I just wanted to use or do something different, you know? And this isn't something that you'd see in, say, like, an anime. Like, if this was the actual anime, it probably wouldn't look like this. Like, it's two completely different styles. Or even if I was a digital artist, you know, doing this scene in digital art, I would probably make the textures look more similar. Like, I would never think to put these two together. And the reason that it looks so different Traditionally, it's just because, obviously, I mean, I'm using two completely different mediums, like, I didn't even have to think about it, but in the end, this is the look that I ended up with. And that's what I love with traditional art, is that you can do things like this, like, you can experiment like this in a way that you really can't with, you know, other forms of art. And so, yes, in my opinion, at least, traditional art can take so much longer and you know it's much harder to fix mistakes and all of that but the reason it is my favorite is because of stuff like this it's just the most fun to me so you know if you're also a traditional artist you probably have an art supply let's say for example colored pencils that you don't use as much as your other ones maybe you got them and you decided, eh, you know, I, these are nice, but I don't really like them as much as my watercolors. I'm better at watercolors. I get better results with them. You know, maybe think about how can you use those colored pencils with the watercolors together? Maybe you don't want to create an entire piece of just colored pencils, but, you know, it would still be nice to try to incorporate them into whatever type of art you like to do now. Maybe even in the end, you'll like the result a lot and it'll become your new normal and you'll use all your art supplies as well. So I think I first started doing this because back in high school, senior year, I took a just a beginner's level art class and every week our homework was she would give us a prompt and we would have to make what we called visual journals based on that prompt. They could be anything. I remember our first prompt was love. So we just had to make a journal entry, like in our sketchbooks, about that topic or inspired by that topic. And I remember she showed us some examples of past visual journals that her students had done. And in a lot of them, you know, I saw them experimenting with a bunch of cool different mediums like mixing them together or using you know things like outside the box that you normally wouldn't see 
And so I tried to incorporate that into my visual journals. And actually, those projects were way more interesting to me than the actual art class. Um, which is kind of sad when, when you think about it, that the homework was more fun than the class. But anyways, I think that habit of doing those journals every week is what's shaped my style now into doing more mixed media type stuff. And so that's pretty much all I have to say about that. You know, maybe if you have an art supply that you think you've been neglecting, I challenge you, see in your next project if you can find a way to incorporate it. As for the actual drawing itself, of course it's of the two main characters from Inuyasha, and I actually did this drawing as a present for my friend's birthday because it is her favorite anime, and although I haven't seen it since I think when I was in 7th into 8th grade, I do remember how completely cute these two characters were together, and so it was still really exciting and kind of nostalgic to draw this. Anyways, I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. If you did, I would love it if you guys subscribed to my channel and also left a like down below. See you all next time.